What is going on everybody? It's your boy Nothing But Skills and today we're going to be talking about Title Update 5. We got some new news from the state of the game and we're going to be talking about everything they had to say during the state of the game and then my thoughts and opinions on what they had to say during the state of the game. So let's get into it. So the 23rd, let's just reiterate, we talked about this last week so I just want to make sure that we get through it and you have all of that information before Yannick and I have a little bit of a chat about some other things. Uh, July 23rd or Tuesday for Year 1 Pass holders. Includes two new main missions, two classified assignments, and the first investigation area of the new expeditions feature. Uh, classified assignments are exclusive to Year 1 pass holders. Uh, Central Aquarium and NSA Site B13 are coming next Tuesday. Um, also, Episode 1 will come with a big rework of the skills system. We've talked about that in other shows. So Bruce has been on here to talk about uh -huh. all of the changes coming with skills. That's kind of the big flavor change coming in with the uh, TU5. Um, we've covered extensively all of those things. Uh, we have VODs and there's archives of all of that, so you can go check out what Bruce has done there. Um, all balance changes, skill changes, and the discovery mode version of the raid will be introduced to everyone on the 23rd. The new narrative content, content except for the classified assignments, will be available to all players uh, the week after on July 30th. Just remember, Title Update 5 comes to everybody July 23rd. Episode 1 for Year 1 Pass Holders comes out on July 23rd. Everybody else will get it one week later. The next thing they dove into were the new loot rewards for the Discovery Mode of the Raid. That's the newest mode for the Division 2 Raid. But remember, this is a matchmaking mode, and it's the easiest mode that you can do the raid on. Now, they talked a lot about if we were able to get the Eagle Bearer or not, and what loot rewards you will be able to get. So let's listen. You had just been chatting to people, some people about the raid and the loot, right? No, the discovery mode. Yeah. We chatted about that before. What's yeah. the clarification on? Uh, there, there's on a clar you were clarification about. to be made about loot on the discovery mm. mode, because apparently there was a lot of discussion there. So just to be 100% clear, hopefully I'm going to be 100% clear. Uh, the uh, discovery difficulty of the raids will give you guaranteed 500 items, mm -hmm. any items on the loot pools, but you will not be able to get the Eagle Bearer or any of the raid exclusive gear sets in the discovery difficulty. Okay. Uh, these are still exclusive to the normal difficulty. So you can do the discovery, I mean, first as a practice and as a <laughs> way to discover the raid and learn the mechanics and everything. You're going to get guaranteed 500, so if you're working your way towards 500, that might be also a way to kind of power level uh, your way to, uh, to 500, but you're not going to get any of the exclusives. So now this is going to cause some controversy in the community, but I think it's a good thing for the community in the long run. Now, I never really liked them giving out any type of really exclusive gear to everybody. I feel like you should have to work for it, so exotics should take some type of effort to get it really good gear should take some type of effort to get to it and i feel that with the eagle bearer with some of the exclusive raid gear that should be only exclusive to the raid not to the discovery mode that is really easy to do now the great thing about this discovery mode is this mode will give players who have no chance at doing the raid because they don't know people to match make meet people and then they can practice the raid and then hopefully if you guys have a good team you guys can say you know what, I think we did really good together. You guys want to try the regular raid, and then you guys can attack that raid together. You add each other, and then you build a community within your friends list. And I think that's where the discovery mode is going to excel. I think people will still play it because you do still get level 500 gear, so that might be the new farming method. A lot of the players who have really good gear might go in there with a couple people like, hey, let's do the discovery mode because you're still getting a lot of really good gear at level 500. You're just not getting those exclusive gear items that you would get from doing the raid on normal. I want to know what you guys think about it, though. What do you guys think about not being able to get the Eagle Bear or those Division 2 exclusive raid gear items in the discovery mode, the matchmaking mode that they did add? Let me know in the comment section, and let's see what everybody has to say about it. They do talk about it a little bit more on their whole thought process on the discovery mode and the loot drops. So let's take a listen. Yeah, so uh, people asking in chat, Moku-chan saying, it. well, so what is the meaning of playing it? So you can experience the raid, the challenge of the raid, and also get really good gear. But we yeah. also want to make sure that the people who yeah. play the raid as it uh, in its purest yeah. form have you know, meaningful rewards for yeah. that experience as well. Yeah, it's just 
if you're somebody that can do the normal rate, Discover is not for you. Uh, so, no, of course. you know, go do the normal rate and go get your rewards there. Discover is really here for one, for people who would like to experience these mechanics and everything, but, mm -hmm. you know, are not, uh, you know, min maxed enough and everything to actually do the normal rate. Mm -hmm. Uh, and two, it's also for people that want to prepare for the normal raids uh, and just want to either practice or also meet like-minded people that they can then befriend and then uh, organize actual runs of the normal raids. This is the intention with the discovery uh, difficulty. It's really for people to discover, experience, learn the mechanics and prepare for the normal one. Yeah, I think it's a, a really good way because it, it can be pretty daunting to get into the raid. I know mm -hmm. I got I got super carried, yep. so I, I haven't had the same experience as it, as everyone else. I enjoyed it, but like I probably wouldn't have jumped in if I didn't know that I was like with other people who were super mm -hmm. confident. But like I wanted to experience the raid, so discovery mode. Yes, um, I am super into. So like I said, I think it's a great place for people to meet people to play with, and I feel that them keeping the eagle bear and also the raid exclusive gear to the normal mode not discovery mode is a good way to keep people playing the raid now they just make some changes to the social space that's the space that's right outside of your base of operation you know where you usually see random players running around and they show off a new look that they're adding to the social space in title update 5. wait so in the tuesday yep. update as far as i know there's some changes to the way uh, some things are laid out in the social space outside the base of operations. So can we just pull up that video and we'll just chat about that while we take a look at some of those changes. So uh, this was captured yesterday, actually, from the build that's coming out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So actually, if you walk out the front of the White House and come out to this area where yeah. the helicopter is, there are some other things that you can do out here. So crafting and recal. Yeah, it looks a bit different, yes. Yeah. So just so you know where these things... It was in the PTS already? Yes. But just for the people who don't know about this, crafting and recal is here. Yeah. There you go. Optimization table, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the full list of everything that is out there, mm -hmm. but... But, I mean, the idea is just basically to bring the services that you have from the base of operation outside in the social area. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want people to be able to actually hang out there yeah. uh, and just do what they would normally do in the base of operation, not have to run around so much either, mm -hmm. uh, but also do that while they're actually in a social space, kind of the way we had the terminal in Division 1. Uh, that's this feeling we want to bring back of like, you know, uh, you're, you're doing your things there, but you see other players as well. Okay, so in my list here, what has been written was, uh, you can now find your stash, uh, crafting bench, recal, and matchmaking out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, the old station inside the building is still available um, in case you don't like being out in the sun. <laughs> so they added some areas for you to do your everyday things outside of the base of operation. But they also talk about this new feature called the shepherd feature. Listen. Okay, I want to take a quick look at the what is called the shepherd feature, which I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about it um, a little bit earlier that the call for backups thing was one of those. The first thing I think that came out on the... Um, the PTS of the game I'm from memory and people were like oh this call for backup feature is super yeah, no, annoying no, I, like agents calling for backup yeah. all that so it was like uh, one of those things but rewind a second and uh, this this will start making a bit of sense um, now let's okay this is the scenario you call for backup and I'm like okay Yannick I'm gonna come and help you out I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a, a good guy as it, as it usually happens I come to your session, we do some stuff, yeah. like maybe you wanted to do a mission or like a mm -hmm. living world activity, uh, we complete it, and then I get some shepherd experience. Oh, what is, what is shepherd experience? Uh, what is, is shepherd um, experience? Because at the end of that... We did not rehearse that. At the so. end of the loop, uh, you will have the chance to endorse me or not endorse me. You won't thumbs down me and be like, you know, that guy sucks. But you'll be like... Like I do in real life. Mm. But like you could be like, hey man, that was really cool endorse, right? Then I will get Shepard experience. And actually, I think I have a video of what that looks like. Uh, oh, so if you had a good time, and uh, <laughs> I love that the person is clapping. Fantastic. You will get Shepard experience. So that's, I, I think that's pretty cool. But it's like, well, why would you want it? So the rewards for the system, so there'll be like a time where your Shepard rank will go up, mm -hmm. up to 99 apparently. Um, and at the end of that period, people will be given 
probably, we haven't defined exactly yet what that's going to be, um, but probably some cosmetic stuff, which would be really cool. So we will see. So you can get out there and, uh, you know, be nice to people. There you go. Shepard feature right. is really cool. It's just really, I mean, yeah, the initial idea with Shepard was just like, how do we, you know, allow people that not necessarily have friends or don't necessarily know anyone, uh, if they're struggling, I mean, the division is still a game that is meant to be social and meant to, uh, uh, you can play it solo, but of course, it's great if you can meet people or play with other people. So we really wanted to have a way to allow people that are in the game, if they're struggling, to actually leverage that huge base of other players uh, to help them out. Uh, but what we see is that people are using it, but they are not really being incentivized to use it. So there's a lot of people that are coding for backup, but not so many people that actually answer, uh, answer mm -hmm. those calls. Uh, so it's really a way for us to try to uh, kind of encourage this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, connections and this kind of you know, uh, people meeting with each other and playing and maybe find out that they actually get along and maybe they want to keep playing together yeah. or maybe even it's going to be like, hey, you know what, actually I have space in my clan, they want to join and it's really, uh, really trying to encourage people to, uh, to meet with each other and you know, uh, make friends and like then hopefully uh, make long-term friends so they can play even more content together. Mm -hmm. The um, other thing with it that I think is pretty cool is that you will have visibly like this little cool wings icon yeah. next to your name, which will show your shepherd level. So if you're like, yeah. if you're real nice, you'll see some people yeah. around with like the walking around with their like shepherd ninety nine. But magic eye, if you don't want to be social, that's fine. You can just turn off call for backup. So I thought that was pretty cool. They're adding a lot of little new things to the game. Um, they're continuing to improve the game. They're working on things, and they really didn't address PvP too much. But I know that they said that Red Storm is working on it. So hopefully soon in the near future, we'll get some more PvP information. Let me know what you guys think about this. All the new changes. Title Update 5 coming out soon. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see skill builds come back. Let me know if you guys are excited for skill builds. What you guys think about this. Don't forget, if you guys didn't watch my last video, How to Farm the Dark Zone. It's a pretty funny one. Don't take it too serious. I was just having fun with that one but at the end of the day content should make you guys always smile laugh chuckle a little bit and hopefully that video did that for you guys don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you found this video useful if you have any questions if you want to voice any of your opinions use the comment section down below and as always guys thank you guys again for all the support but until the next video nothing but skills out <laughs>